And if I thought this was the right pattern, I'd saw it like that. It ain't going to happen. Hey guys, welcome to another fun episode of Sawing with Hobby Hardwood. I was watching some YouTube videos the other day on saw milling. <laughs> yes, I do actually watch YouTube and I do watch other saw milling videos. You know, you can always learn something sometimes. I saw one of the, actually it was last night that made my head explode. It was put out by a professional sawmill company. I'm not gonna name it. Don't trash other people on YouTube. Low ground kind of thing. I'm not gonna do that. But it had many hundred thousand views over many years. And basically it was, this is the best pattern to saw a log. And they went into some various reasons on how to do it. And meanwhile, I was like, are you kidding me? How many people have watched this, maybe just got them a new sawmill and have ruined a lot of wood with it? Now, I'll admit, if you get a new sawmill and you're just excited to cut wood, heck, you can cut that thing any way you want to, but once you're interested in making high quality wood, you don't do that. The sawmill is a tool. You should use the tool to make high grade wood, not expend logs just to make sawdust. I mean, the first time you use a hammer, it's cool. After 10 or 15 years of using a hammer, it's just another hammer, right? So you're trying to put the nail into wood. Same thing with a sawmill. So if you're a new sawyer, this is, the pattern you don't use, I'm gonna put it on into this log because like you say, it's just, I just, anyway. Um, and then you go, well, who in the heck am I? Why, why would you even listen to some fool in a yellow shirt, hobby hardwood on it? It's one of the reasons you ought to listen to us. Two years in a row now, for the entire state, we were ranked the highest grade lumber producer in the state of Alabama. Two years running now. That include, now we're in Huntsville, two and a half million people within a 50 mile radius of Huntsville. Huntsville's the largest city in Alabama right now. That includes all of Alabama, Montgomery, Birmingham, and that includes all the lumber companies that sell lumber in Alabama or produce lumber. And that includes the companies that you probably get catalogs from. I'm not gonna mention their names again. As a matter of fact, one of those catalog companies called us up last summer and asked us to supply them exclusively with our wood. We didn't want to, it's not what we do. Uh, I'm not in the business of making them money. I'm in the business of saving you money and making me money. Um, and the reason was they said our wood was half the price and twice the quality. Well, if you assume we're all using the same logs, then why is our lumber twice the quality? It's because we do the saw milling correctly. We do the kiln drying correctly, we do the, the, the secondary processing correctly, but it, it starts with the correct sawmill pattern. So I'm gonna to explain to you a couple things. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to explain to you the pattern you don't use. Again, every time I talk about it, my blood pressure goes up. Um, so this is the pattern you see on a lot of YouTube videos uh, specifically some of the beginning videos, and it's not what you do. It was basically take a log and skin a couple of this and skin a couple of that, and then just start wailing on it all the way through. And the idea was that, I don't know what the idea was. I explained it. It was like the idea was that you center the pith in one board or something. Yeah, yeah okay, well, you're supposed to do that anyway. Uh, that, that's like you don't eat the seeds in an apple. Doesn't matter how you eat it, you just don't do it. And when you're sawing, you don't include the pith in a board unless you expect it to crack, and that's not hard to figure out because it's already cracked. So this is wrong. Don't do it. The only time you use this pattern is if you're doing live edge slabs, which 
by their very nature are going to be a lower grade product because you have to, it's called through saw. When you through saw, the boards are going to move a lot more than if you do a conventional, it's called a grade sawing pattern. Grade sawing, high grade, low grade, any grade, grade A, it's called grade sawing not through sawing. Live edge is through sawing. I'm going to do a video on that here for too long and there's things you can do on that to make your quality even higher. But when you're sawing logs that you care about, now if you're giving to your brother-in-law or something and you don't really care how they turn, man, just burn through them. Bottom line though, when you're grade sawing, this pattern, no. Let me explain why. Uh, this is walnut and if I thought this was the right pattern, I'd saw it like that. It ain't going to happen. First off, and you're going to have to bear with me, there are a few things you got to know about logs and drying stresses. Basically, the, when a board dries, it dries proportional to the grain pattern. So a board that has the grain running vertically, which is called vertical grain or sometimes quarter sawn, will dry more in that direction, in the Think of the lines, the lines shrink. You know, the grain lines, think of them, they will shrink in whatever direction they're at. So a vertical grain sawn board or quarter sawn board will actually shrink in thickness more than a flat sawn board. The ratio is about 70 or, or seven to 10. So that means that if ideally, if you could get all the grain lines in the same direction, the board is going to shrink perfectly proportional from edge to edge, and it's going to be a perfectly flat board. By the same token, if you are crossing the grain, changing angles, as the angles change, that board is going to dry at a different ratio in that local area, and that's going to induce what? It's going to induce cup. If the board is not sawn per perfectly parallel, it's going to induce bow, right? Everybody wants to learn how to saw a cupped and bowed board. Well, for the first three logs you put on your mill, have at it. After that, quality, right, is what you're looking for. Don't saw cupped and bowed boards. Um, just don't. It's a waste of log. So, this pattern you can see the growth rings like this. Look how the angles change. So out here, let's just pick a, pick a board, right? So right here, our angles, growth rings are like that. As you go through the log, you're going to actually get pure vertical grain. Now, when you're off the center of the log and you're up here getting the side wood, which is the highest grade wood out there, these angles are going to change and you're going to start getting, so it's called cathedral pattern. These angles don't equal these angles and then in some cases you're actually getting flat angles. So as this angle transitions to flat right here and then transitions out here again to vertical, look at the change in angle you're getting on the board. This board cannot dry flat. It's gonna cup. So here's a good one. So vertical, vertical, vertical. I'm gonna just start drawing in the angles. And then they're changing. You can't get flat wood when your grain angles change. It's just that simple. This gets really bad the further out you get, as I was saying, because you can see how these angles are like this, this grain ring is like this, this one's like that. So you're going from 45 to dead flat to 45. This board will not dry flat. I don't care what you do with it. There's no way in the world I would saw a log like this. The other thing you gotta realize is that there's different areas of the grain that you have to pay attention to. First of all, you got the sapwood. Walnut, this is an exceptional sapwood walnut log. There's very little sapwood. Anytime you cross a sapwood boundary to a heartwood boundary, 
you're going to have wood movement. Those are going to shrink at a different rate when they dry. The other thing is you have to look at right here. This is called the pith. I don't know if you can see it. This is juvenile wood. It's when the tree is a sapling. This wood is different than this wood, which is different than that wood. So if you start including, and sometimes this ring may be huge. It depends on the species, right? If you include the pith, any of the pith or close to the pith in with the regular wood, it's going to really cause it to cup and bow. You don't just start sawing a log like you're slicing American cheese. I'm going to erase this and I'm going to show you how you're supposed to saw it. Give me just a second. I got to go get my eraser. Um, where'd it go? Oh, I know where it is. I got it from a Walmart Office Depot. What we want to do is do a sawing pattern that tries to keep the angles of the grain lines consistent in the board. So you can't just cut across it. These growth rings look like that. All right? So again, if I was to cut across this whole board, like right here, let's just draw it. I'm gonna have growth rings here, here, here. Those will be in this angle, this angle. These will be flat, dead board. What you wanna do is you wanna, as you're sawing, you wanna look at it and go, well, from here to here, they're pretty constant. So I'm gonna to try to target this board. The National Hardwood Lumber Association rule book, NHLA, walnut rules, high grade walnut, only needs to be four inches and wider. I prefer six, but either way, this is going to be about 14. High grade board, 12 to 14 inches wide versus a low grade board all the way cut across. So basically what you do is you kind of spiral in on it. So you take a few in this direction for grade sawing. You come down here and you look at that and that's kind of ugly. Then you take a few here and then you take a few here and then you come in and you come in and you come in and at some point you'll notice pretty much all the boards are going to have cathedral grain and about in the same pattern. So every board is going to be optimized for stability when it's dried. And again, you'll notice with this pattern, we're still staying out of this mess. <coughs> Excuse me, staying out of that, because that's just a waste of time. And you'll notice that you'll have different widths of boards as you go down. Well, guess what? You can either saw different widths boards and keep the quality up, or you can just through saw the whole thing, like on some of the videos with many hundred thousand views that just miseducated people and get cupped and bowed wood. It's your choice. The bottom line is, if you're gonna go to the effort to saw these things, you're gonna to get to harvest them. If you're gonna to go to the effort to buy them, you're gonna to go to the effort to dry them, stack them, kiln dry and build furniture out of them. Yeah, okay, spend a little more effort up front sawing them. It will pay off in the long run. It's not a waste of energy or time. The key is produce lumber with the smallest amount of angle change in the growth ring in the board that you can. And it's not a formula, it's you gotta look at the log, it doesn't take long once you get the eyeball for it to produce the flattest, most high grade wood that you possibly can. It's a difference between sawing cheese up, whack, 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 or grade sawing as a serious sawmiller or professional sawmiller or even a guy or a girl who just wants to produce better wood. And, uh, and if you are making a video and you're sawing like, just like you're cutting American cheese, please don't because it just gives me a headache to watch it. I don't care how much spandex you're wearing, damn.
great saw your logs. That's all I can say. I need to stop talking. I got to get ready to start sawing. Chip's looking at me like I'm going crazy. He's wondering when the sawmill's going to go up and start running. So we're going to get a few logs. We're going to trim them up. We're going to get to sawing. Hopefully be able to see some of this happen. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.